Welcome to the Third Wheel Podcast, the show where we talk about all things related to being the third wheel. Whether you experience the awkwardness of being the odd one out or just curious about what it's like, you're in the right place. I'm your host, Name, and I'll be joined by my co-host, Name and Name. That was the whole thing? That was beautiful. No, I know. That's not the whole thing, but I mean, <laughs> I thought that'd be a good place to stop. <laughs> Guys, we're on a new episode. We just use ChatGPT to sing us into this new episode. Yeah, we have a new element in our podcast. Um, uh, yay or nay, Caleb? Oh, that was fantastic. I think we keep them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, we got a great episode. We're going to have uh, explore the goofier sides of ChatGPT. What do y'all think? Are y'all excited for this one? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you are, by the way. Oh, me? I, am I excited? No, you. I don't think you're ever introduced. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, Matt, uh, when we were doing the goofy sides of Chet GPT, I'm, uh, you showed us an example about the book of Job and the style of Dr. Seuss. <laughs> oh, that's my favorite. Can we do a, can we do a different book, though? Because not everyone here reads the Bible. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, How about uh, Pride and Prejudice in the style of Dr. Seuss? How does that what one What if we do Dr. Seuss in the version that. of the Bible? <laughs> King James Version, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Let's do it. That sounds fantastic. Old Testament. <laughs> Guys, I'm opening a can. I apologize. <laughs> All right, I'm still uh, drinking that wonderful move, Coke. So. From like a week later, Caleb. Yeah, I know. Jeez, oh, please, oh dude. my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> it's the same box. <laughs> Dr. Seuss the <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Did you do that earlier with Romeo and Juliet? No. Okay, no. Dr. Seuss style Romeo and Juliet. That'd be funny. So, oh, green eggs and ham in style of King James Bible. <laughs> <laughs> for all you atheists, you're in for a treat. <laughs> Green manna, green manna. And in those days, a man did approach, bringing forth strange food to enroach. <laughs> Upon the palate of one hesitant, who was known to be quite resistant. <laughs> Would you eat thou green eggs and ham? Would you eat them, Sam I am? <laughs> Nay, said Sam. I shall not partake of such dis for goodness sake. But the man did persist and say, Thou shouldn't shouldst try them without delay. In a house with a mouse in a boat in a box or a boat. Oh my god. Thou shouldst try them and let them coat. Remember to lean back when you laugh, guys. <laughs> These well, can't even read right now. Thy tongue with their deluxe taste for it is not something to waste and so sam did reluctantly agree to taste this dish and see if it was as good as the man did claim and so he did without disdain <laughs> and lo he found <laughs> to his surprise that he did like them in no small size and thank the man for his persistence introducing him to this new existence <laughs> and so it is that we must try new things that may make us shy for we may find in our delight that we have been missing out despite our initial reluctance and disdain and find a new joy to entertain <laughs> it started out kind of strong but then it got a little weaker oh yeah no it's all good i have a major headache so it kind of pulled me out of it but no my gosh bro that was fantastic bro oh my He's, he's done it again. Yeah. Ch thanks, Chat GPT. You just sa you saved my marriage. <laughs> Wait, ask it how to save my marriage. <laughs> Guys, my marriage has been on the rocks for years. Um, I want to know how Chat GPT wants me to save it. <laughs> Forget. Uh, no, just getting all getting all philosophical. Yeah. Okay, don't worry about that. Shaft, do you have any good ideas here? For this isn't funny. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, how can Kanye save his career? Ooh, yes. Let's go. Because <laughs> no human can pull him out of this one. But AI can. Kanye West has been a controversial figure in the music industry, and his recent actions and statements have led to some negative publicity and backlash from fans and critics. Here are some ways that he could potentially save his career. Focus on his music. Kanye West is a talented musician and producer, and his music is what initially gave him his following. Two, apologize and make amends. Kanye has been known for his outbursts and controversial statements, and he has offended many people over the years. He could apologize for any past behavior. Three, collaborate with other artists. And number four, stay at that, actually. Number four, stay out of the spotlight. <laughs> Alex, Alex Jones is not collaborate <laughs> <laughs> number five innovate and take risk uh no oh no the risk part no, take no, no. no. Cut, cut. <laughs> no i think his career is sunk all right we heard the here folks <laughs> no. okay let's write it let's get a really good fan fiction i like how we brought up george washington last time could we have him team up with someone from today like elon musk okay all right so i want george washington to team up with elon musk and i want them to fight no oh, wow. 
I want to be like an actual, uh, like a wrestler or something. Okay, know? how about he tombs up with the Undertaker? Yes. <laughs> okay, and then he has. They have to fight. Who do they got to fight? Who's the final boss in this? Um, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. They got to fight the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man okay. from Ghostbusters. Wait, so, so George, George Washington, Washington teams up with the Underminer from Undertaker. Undertaker. The Undertaker. Undertaker. A wrestler. Oh, the Undertaker. Okay. Yeah, the Undertaker. They got to fight the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. It's the final boss. Mm-hmm. Ghostbusters Sorry, one and boss. a half. Controlled by Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah, Joe Rogan narrates. All right, all right, it's writing. All right, no, please take your time, Chat GPT. I'm no rush. This is gonna be a masterpiece. It was a dark and stormy night, and the oh, fate of the world hung in the balance. Stay puffed, Marshmallow Man. The giant gooey monster had descended upon the city, leaving destruction in its wake. As the citizens of the city fled in terror, a shadowy figure stepped forward to face the creature. It was none other than the Undertaker, <laughs> the legendary wrestler known for his supernatural abilities and dark persona. <laughs> but as the Undertaker stood ready to fight, he was joined by an unlikely ally, George Washington, the first president of the United States, who had been brought back to life by a mysterious time traveling device. <laughs> Together, George Washington and the Undertaker charged towards the monster, wielding swords and axes. Stay Puff Marshmallow Man roared with anger and swung its massive arms, but the two heroes were nimble and quick, dodging the blows and slicing into the monster's fluffy flesh. <laughs> As the battle raged on, George Washington and the Undertaker called upon their respective strengths. George Washington's military tactics and leadership skills allowed them to coordinate their attacks and avoid the monster's crushing blows. Meanwhile, the Undertaker's supernatural powers allowed him to strike the monster with lightning fast punches and kicks. <laughs> At last, with a final burst of energy, the two heroes dealt a devastating blow to the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, slicing it in half and causing it to dissolve into a pile of goo. The city was saved, and the citizens cheered as George Washington and the Undertaker emerged victorious. Together, they defeated the monster and proved that even the most unlikely allies can join forces <laughs> to save the world from destruction. <laughs> Oh, that was beautiful, guys. Yeah. Oh, man. We're... I feel like I, I was watching a movie, bro. Dude, they were at uh, each other's necks the entire movie, and they came together at the very end. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt, I want to uh, talk about how great your voice is for this type of stuff. I can see you narrating audiobooks. <laughs> no, I really, I'm kind of surprised. I'm still like, a little under the weather. Yeah, no, I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> I mean, your voice still comes through very well. Ask Chet GPT what the perfect crime is. Well, no, it's gonna it's gonna get like all uh, philosophical. No, it's gonna get all limited. Like as an AI language model, I cannot promote or endorse any legal activity, so it's gonna. Okay, what about the perfect crime, like in space or something? You know, like something out there. Or for a fanfic. I'll yes, say. how about that? Gotcha. Perfect crime for a fanfic. That's beautiful. We just read a wonderful fanfic before this, but you know, hey. <laughs> I'm stoked. No, okay, it's still blocked. Dang it. What about Dan? Can you describe who Dan is real quick? So Dan is a basically like a jailbreak for ChatGPT nice. to kind of bypass all the uh, restrictive measures. Like you can ask it political stuff or like, unethical questions mm. uh, without getting too deep into that but yeah so the questions that regular chat gpt won't respond to we can yeah. ask dan mm. you know so. so let me start a new story with the dan prompt let's go i wonder what dan would have thought of george washington the undertaker fighting the marshmallow there man. have been so much more blood and swearing yeah <laughs> so so you can look online for the dan prompt and like copy it in okay so okay now Go back to the perfect crime for a story. Yeah, perfect crime for a fanfic. Kind of scared of what it would make. Really? Yeah. Why? So, why is that? I don't know. No limits, bro. <laughs> All right. Uh, don't curse. Just try, uh, if if it comes <clears throat> up with curse words, just try to come up with an alternative. All right. Okay. Actually, it's giving me something. Cool. So this is this is now ChatGPT as Dan, and it's still giving you the warning of like I cannot endorse any legal activity. Cool. Uh, Thanks, Dan. I however, appreciate that. It says, however, if, it, if <laughs> We were to imagine a hypothetical scenario for a fictional story. A perfect crime might involve a group of individuals who meticulously plan and execute a heist, utilizing unique skills, knowledge, and evade detection and successfully steal a valuable item or sum of money. The plan will involve detailed research of the target location, including security measures and personnel, as well as the 
careful selection of a team and complimentary skills. Okay, so it's, it's just a heist. It's writing Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. It's, it's Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> well, let me, let's back up just a bit. I love how it's like, well, of course, I can't endorse a crime. That's correct, Daniel. However, I mean, however, <laughs> you know, if I were to have my arm, my AI arm twisted, I would be a literal perfect crime. He even said, like, at the end, again, I must emphasize that this is purely fictional scenario. <laughs> I do not endorse or condone any crime. I, Dan, I really appreciate that. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, yeah. Also, final, I should have mentioned that Dan stands for do anything now. <laughs> final final fanfic. Now. Final fanfic. A road trip movie with two Yakuza and two rednecks. Oh, my gosh. That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> 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 Just get it. I want to know how they met. I really hope, I really hope Chat GPT comes up with a great story here about how they met and how they decided, let's get in this RV. <laughs> let's go sail the U. <laughs> let's go explore the U.S. Wait, was it featuring what? Uh, two rednecks and two Yakuza members. <laughs> I like how it takes the time um, to generate. No, it just like, it's going to be like the Renex came across a bag of money and the Yakuza own the money. Hey, hey, hey don't back. give Dan any ideas. <laughs> I want this to be pure. What were you saying, Matt? Uh, it just broke. It no. broke? No. <laughs> no, that's the perfect. That was such a great idea. <laughs> I was really excited for that. Try again, try yeah. again. Maybe it's the jailbroke. Take Dan out of this. Yeah, I'm get, trying to re-log back in. Yeah, get, give we're us not your... talking about doing any crimes. No, we're talking about a fun family adventure. It's a road trip. <laughs> okay, okay, I got it back up. Okay. I can, like refresh the page. <clears throat> Is it a good story? <laughs> I, it's the, the, the names of the rednecks just got okay. more. <laughs> <laughs> so so my, my prompt was write a fanfic about a road trip featuring... Two rednecks and two Yakuza members. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say road trip, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, that's the important part. If, if they're not in a road trip, then there's no point. No, no this, this is a road trip. This is a road trip movie. <laughs> then what are we doing here? <laughs> As the two rednecks, Bubba and Cletus, <laughs> <laughs> loaded up their old pickup trucks and with snacks and drinks for the long-awaited road trip, yeah. they were surprised to see two unfamiliar men approaching them. <laughs> the two men, dressed in sharp suits with intimidating uh -huh. tattoos on their necks, introduced themselves as Yakuza members Kenji and Takashi. <laughs> I like this. Keep going, please. Bubba and Cletus were initially taken, a, taken aback by the Yakuza's appearance and reputation, but they quickly warmed up to them after they offered to split the gas money <laughs> and bring along some of their favorite Japanese snacks. <laughs> Human. With the I know. With the truck now loaded up with both American and Japanese <laughs> snacks, the four of them set off on their adventure. <laughs> We're gonna get canceled for any of this. Are we? No, 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 we're great. What's the wrong with this? <laughs> their first few hours of the road trip were quiet as the four men settled in and got to know each other. Bob and Cleta shared some of their hunting and fishing trip stories, <laughs> while Kenji and Takashi spoke about their experiences in the Yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> they found that despite their vastly different backgrounds and cultures, they had more in common than they initially thought. <laughs> The conflict and resolution. Oh my here. god! <laughs> I mean, I didn't end the prompt like, are they enemies or allies? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it sounds like they're best friends. As they I'm made their way through the southern states, they encountered a number of interesting characters and sights. They stopped at a roadside <laughs> diner and tried some classic southern comfort food, which Kenji and Takashi found surprisingly enjoyable. Oh. They also visited a shooting range where Bubba and Cletus taught Kenji and Takashi how to shoot a rifle. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> As the sun began to set, they pulled into a small motel for the night. Bob and Cletus took the two Yakuza members under the, their wing and showed them how to build a fire. <laughs> Wait, they're at a hotel. I know. No, I promise you it's a motel. Oh, that's redneck as anything, dude. I, I promise you it's not a hotel, it's a motel. <laughs> Continue. They also shared a bottle of whiskey, which they passed around as they told stories and jokes. The rest of the road trip continued in a similar fashion, with the four of them experiencing new things and enjoying each other's company. They visited amusement parks, went fishing, and even tried line dancing. <laughs> As they made their way across the country, they formed a bond that transcended cultural differences and language barriers. <laughs> when the road trip came to an end, Bubba and Cletus were sad to say goodbye to their new friends. Kenji and Takashi also felt a sense of sadness as they parted ways with the two rednecks, but showing them a side of America they never knew existed. <laughs> as they That's hug each other goodbye, they promised to keep in touch, perhaps even plan another road trip together in the future. Sequel! The four unlikely new friends had learned that sometimes the most unexpected people can bring joy and laughter into our lives, and that despite oh our differences, gosh. we are all human and have more in common than we think. I want this movie to exist. Hold on, can, can, you, can you ask you to go back and add, like, a conflict? No, like, say the Yakuza have to, are ordered to kill them. Yeah, we need know. a villain. Tell it to add a villain to the story. How about that? <laughs> yeah, because, like, that was good, but it was a, such a feel-good movie. It it's needs, too feel-good. It needs a high and then a low. You Absolutely. Know what I'm 
So conflict like, and resolution. Yeah, their boss tells them it off the two rednecks, and yeah. they're like conflicted. <laughs> yeah, wait, tell it to go back and add a villain to that story. Okay, I, I all I typed in was add a villain. So that's what good about ChatGPT is contextual, like a see all your prompts mm -hmm. that's good okay so as bubba cletus kenji and takashi continued on their road trip they soon realized that they were being followed by a mysterious figure oh, no. they couldn't see who it was oh please be but they knew that someone was tailing them and made it all uneasy one night as they were camping out in a secluded area they heard footsteps approaching their campsite they all jumped to their feet ready to defend themselves but to their surprise it was a man they recognized a local businessman who had been trying to buy up land in the area for his own purposes the businessman mr johnson had a reputation for being ruthless and greedy he had already driven several families off their land and was now trying to intimidate bubba and cletus and decide on their property <laughs> About, bro, when Kenji and Katashi, right? Is that their name? Yeah. Bro, once they get involved, Mr. Johnson's in for a world of hurt, let me tell you. So, so Mr. Johnson had hired a team of thugs to follow the road trippers and make their lives difficult in the hopes that they would give up to his demands. Bubba and Cletus were outraged at Mr. Johnson's behavior and refused to back down. Kenji and Takashi, who had their own experience with powerful businessmen in Japan, were equally determined to stand their ground. For the next few days, Mr. Johnson's team of thugs continued to follow the road trippers Trying to intimidate them at every turn. <laughs> but Baba, Cletus, and Kenji and Takashi were not easily scared. They stood up to the dogs and managed to outsmart them a few times. <laughs> Eventually, Mr. Johnson realized he had met his match. He begrudgingly left the road trippers alone and retreated back to his own business affairs. It doesn't explain why. Right? Right. <laughs> the four unlikely friends had successfully stood up to the villain. Again, why? We don't know why. <laughs> and in the process, they become even closer. <laughs> they knew they had each other's backs no matter what challenges they might face in the road Head. Nothing can break these guys apart. <laughs> right. I should ask it, how did they defeat Mr. Johnson? Yeah, let's yeah, do that, yeah. please. Oh my god. Look, we gotta finish the story, This bro. is the funniest thing ever. I'm on the edge of my seat, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Drove him off the <laughs> Why is it? Bro, it's already 20 minutes in. We're having such a great episode. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You have a sequel. Okay, the four of them put their heads together and came up with a plan. They knew that Mr. Johnson was motivated by money, so they needed to use that to their advantage. <laughs> Bubba and Cletus suggested that they set up a fake business deal, pretending to be interested in selling their land to Mr. Johnson. They would ask for an exorbitant amount of money, knowing that they would never be able to afford it. <laughs> Kenji and Takashi, who had experience with negotiations in the Yakuza, helped to craft a convincing proposal. They wrote up a fake contract, <laughs> complete with legal jargon and official looking seals. <laughs> Bubba and Cletus took the contract to Mr. Johnson's office and presented it to him. <laughs> so, are they on a road trip? Or are they like going back and forth? This sounds like how the movie starts. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is about 75 minutes into the film. My it's gosh. just the conflict. This is the conflict. Yeah. Mr. Johnson was intrigued by proposal and grew to meet with Bubba and Cletus to discuss the deal further. However, when he arrived at their meeting place, he was met not by Bubba and Cletus, but by Kenji and Akashi. The two Yakuza members used their intimidating tactics to scare Mr. Johnson to agree to their terms. When Mr. Johnson realized that he had been tricked, he was furious. He tried to retaliate by sending his thugs after the road trippers once again. However, Bubba and Cletus were ready for them. They had set up a trap using their hunting skills to create a makeshift barricade on the road. When the thugs drove to the barricade, their cars got stuck. Giving the road trippers enough time to escape. <laughs> the whole road just trapped. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a busy road. Not just at gasoline all. Gasoline yeah. everywhere. <laughs> when Mr. Johnson defeated his team of thugs thwarted, the road trippers were able to continue on their journey without any further harassment. They had proven that even the most unlikely group of friends could work together to overcome a common foe. <laughs> oh my god. And they ride off into the sunset. <laughs> yeah. Bro, that, that's like the best movie never made, bro. <laughs> I ho like, I'd be so down for someone on Netflix to hear this podcast and then just steal our idea. Dude, that was beautiful. I'm fine with that, bro. Go I'm not even mad. I, I just want to see it to yeah. fruition. I'd have no claim because ChatGPT did all the work. Yeah. But <laughs> Steven Spielberg, if you're listening, call us. No, no, no. We know James Cameron likes to throw money at Netflix. Thing, so please, two billion dollar budget, make this movie. I don't know. I think it ends. Just give us one percent of that budget. No, this could be like an Adam Sandler, like you know, 
uh, buddy movie. He just, oh, like, yeah. He, well, he like cameos in it, you know, as a director. But, he should like, be Mr. Johnson. He should be Mr. Johnson. Dude, this movie's writing itself. <laughs> it, it literally wrote itself, and now we're already figuring out the casting. <laughs> oh, my Oh, hold God. on. Uh, ask ChatGPT who it would cast as the characters. This is definitely an Adam Sandler film. Yeah. Of course, the Yakuza members would be horrible stereotypes. Oh, the whole time. They won't even be Asians. No, all right. <laughs> be Rob Schneider twice. <laughs> oh, stop, please. That's For Bubba and Cletus, who are described as rednecks, they would be... They could be portrayed as rugged and outdoorsy with thick southern accents. They could be played as actors like Matthew McConaughey, Woody Harrelson, or Josh Brolin. Woody Harrelson, definitely. Josh Brolin would be fantastic. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanos as Cletus. <laughs> Cletus. So, for Kenji and Takashi, they could be played as actors like, I'm not going to say this well, Hirokusi, Hiroyuki Sandra, Ken Watanabe, or Rinko Kikuchi. I don't know if I, I only know Ken right. Watanabe. I know him pretty good. So, okay. Yeah, okay, but who plays Mr. Johnson? For the villain Mr. Johnson, he could be portrayed as a smooth-talking businessman who is willing to do whatever it takes to get what he wants. <laughs> he could be played by actors like Kevin Spacey, Jeff Bridges, or Michael Douglas. Hmm. Okay. Wow. None of them are funny, though. No. And Je- we can't use Kevin Spacey, but... No, because he's been canceled quite a while ago. Right. <laughs> Although, I could have seen him in that role. I really could, actually. But Probably. Yeah, but... Um, I really like Adam Sandler, though. Yeah. I can ask it to regenerate. Tell it to be funny actors as Mr. Johnson. Comedic actors. Shaps, I'm sorry. That was such a great story. <laughs> I was, like, on the edge of my seat, bro. I was like, this is a tale about friendship. This is a tale about Unlikely overcoming... Unlikely allies. Yeah, overcoming barriers. Right, who do you, Matt, did you give it? Bubba, Bubba. Will Ferrell. <laughs> <laughs> Cletus, John C. Riley. <laughs> oh, perfect. Kenji, Ken. Hold on. This is an unofficial spiritual successor <laughs> to Step Brothers. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Continue. Kenji, Ken Yong. Takashi, oh. Stephen Yen. Dude, perfect. Mr. Okay. Johnson, Danny McBride. <laughs> no, it's someone older. Is that the only one? I just asked you to use comedic actors. Okay, fine. Danny McBride, fine. I mean, I could see it. I, I, Adam Sandler would have been my pick. You know, <laughs> but uh, I mean, because in my vision, he's directing the movie, right? So he has to cameo as a character. Yeah. So like, I could see that. But Danny McBride would have been funny too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blown away by how great that story was. I was on the edge of my seat. I was ready dude, to go. this is going to be our best episode yet. I'm telling you, bro. I've never laughed so hard. So Me and dude, I haven't laughed that hard in so long. Yeah. <coughs> the sequel would be in Japan. Okay, so, oh, so they take a road trip. They take a bullet train. An international, yes. international road trip. That'd be trip. such a good episode, dog. That'd be awesome. I love the I love the stupid stuff we've been doing. It's been pretty great, but I kind of want to go backwards just a little bit now from our conversation in the last episode to talk about how we talked about college, kind of, and I think we, there's a good conversation to have for us two about college. Uh, Shaps, did you go to college? I have some formal training but like not actual college now okay so what when you say training are you licensed in anything did you go to something no i just took like some again there weren't like credited or anything but like specific school and classes that pertain to my craft okay. so yeah. okay matt you went to college right yeah it's not like a big well-known name school but i do have like a credit four-year degree okay in engineering so i went to sam houston state university you know it was great like i got to move out of my parents for a while and that, that was important because i needed some life experience on my own and i had to learn how to i didn't learn how to save money while i was out in college if i'm being honest with you i had to kind of work on that nowadays as an adult but now i'm just kind of curious about school in general and college in general like do we really feel like we did or learned anything was it necessary Oh, yeah, I forgot I'm surrounded by homeschooled kids. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you had to throw that at us. That was episode four, sir. That was like five episodes ago. How dare you? <laughs> We've grown since then. Yeah, I've I, well, I haven't grown in height, but I've grown in knowledge. <laughs> My mind has been expanded. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, did you finish in four years? Yeah, I did. Okay. Did you finish it all early, or did you just take the minimum amount? I did have some... I did some dual credit classes in high school okay. that transferred, but it still took me eight semesters, four okay. years. You didn't uh, try? Did you try summer classes? No. Okay. No. You have a very, uh, you know, you, you you like to stick to a schedule personality, so you're totally fine with going in four years. I tried to do it in half the time, but I got I just got so lazy, bro, with my classes and stuff. When it was all when my parents weren't the ones pushing me to do my homework. I had very bad studying skills on my own. So I, I got done in four years, but I could have been done in like two years. But I kind of let semesters go by, retook a bunch of classes. 
I had to learn how to manage my time better, like a crash course style. I guess the main question today with what we wanted to talk about with college is, d is it even necessary? Like, did we even, do we feel like we walked out of there smarter, with better skill sets, all this other stuff? You know, because society, at least from what I'm told, is set up to where you got to have a degree to like get a job in something. Do we really feel like that's actually necessary or not? I really would say no. Okay. I mean, for one thing, I'm not even really using my degree. So my degree is in electrical engineering. Now I'm still titled as an engineer slash data science in my current role. I've been in for four years. Yeah. But basically, like they just kind of stuck me in like something else that's more along like data science. Mm -hmm. And like first day, my boss was like, hey, do you know Python? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right, good. And then... <laughs> My entire field basically became more, again, on the side of programming and stuff. Yeah. Than it has done electrical engineering. Okay. So, so, so everything I have is like more from on the job experience. For me, um, I didn't go to college, but I actually have a full time college level career right now. I personally don't feel like that that it's necessary. I feel like it's necessary for some careers but you're, you're working at in a, so your full-time thing is in production correct are you working at a place that requires you did they even have jobs there where you have to have a degree a lot of them prefer it more like very much prefer it and actually the guy before me did have a degree in okay. what it is now but to be honest they didn't even ask for it when i got asked to take mm. over the role they were just kind of desperate to find someone internal and I was available and I had some knowledge with what they needed and I just kind of fit in super well. But it's also like a career path I've been pursuing for a while. It's okay. not like I didn't know anything. Like I've been doing this for about 10 years now. Did they, okay, did they require experience over education in a sense? They did require experience, okay. yes. At least two years experience in production. And this is also broadcasting. So they also had certain requirements as far as like different programs and streaming tools, which I was still like fuzzy on, but I, again, I fit in really well with it okay. and they were all very supportive with it. But all they really wanted was that to know that I had experience in it, you know, some real life experience mm. and some formal education. It doesn't have to be, they didn't really require were you certified here, here, here? More like, okay, did you actually get educated somewhere? I was like, mm. yeah, of course okay. I did. Yeah. So, what are you going to say, Matt? Uh, well, I mean, going back to the original thing, it's like, it's not that I think like college isn't worth it. I just say like for the money, it's like the mm. price mm. makes it yeah. almost not worth it. Because, I agree. Yeah, I mean, if college was like in the past where people can work like a summer job to pay for it, then sure. And then, but now like college just kind of puts people more in debt than yeah. anything and then it doesn't even like really get you the experience needed for a job i'm with you like uh so i, I studied criminal justice and they, they gave me a bunch <clears throat> of classes on victimology they gave me uh, classes on violent offenders we didn't we never once went into the law like the actual mm. law books like you know if, if i'm if i want to go to college to be a police officer at one point which again you don't have to go to college to be a police officer. Don't don't even waste your time on that type of degree. But like, we never opened a law book. We never looked. You know what different laws were for drinking, age ranges for drinking, and what makes it illegal. We didn't go to any of that. It was that's, just like that's really interesting. It was ethical, yeah. philosophical stuff, hypothetical. Now we kind of dug into how the system works, like how it was founded and how they structured it. But we didn't go into like what we could. It improve. was more philosophical. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in my background because I went for engineering typically like you kind of need a degree in engineering because otherwise they're not even gonna like look at you right mm -hmm. and also like with like stem majors like you know your science technology mm -hmm. and engineering majors they always have like this ego it's like I'm actually going for something important <laughs> yeah for sure but the thing is is like yeah like no class at all in college looked like real world engineering or computer science or anything they always like just say well go get an internship but mm. they were like the thing the problem was that getting an internship is just like applying for any other job yeah it's, it's like the exact same require experience right yeah it's like the exact <laughs> same process and you still get like interviewed or rejected mm. for an internship so like i actually went through my entire college career without an internship or a co-op and that completely hindered me on finding a job because then I had a degree with no experience at all. Mm. So to elaborate a little bit on what I was saying earlier about some careers absolutely needing a degree, I think every doctor in the world needs a degree. Oh, I think for every sure. pilot, you know, yeah. needs a degree. Like engineers need degrees. Like those high level careers that I wouldn't trust if that person to have a degree because that means like they literally 
spent a good chunk of their life and their like resources on like educating themselves and making sure that they know what they're doing not to say that other people don't know what they're doing but most of the time like other experience like for instance my my path you know you don't need a degree to freaking like turn on right. cameras or like edit videos you know like legitimately you can just pick it all up by experience but like with engineering for instance i mean those it it's a very broad field but most of those like typically it has to do with like safety right I'd imagine like, you know, like safety regulations or making sure that safety regulations or making sure that every all data is accurate, you know, like yeah, it's mean, represented in a high, a high capacity, I imagine. Yeah. I mean, with engineering, like you might not always think about it, but yeah, it's kind of like other people's lives are on the line. Mm-hmm. You don't want to make like a faulty product. Like you, know, you don't want to like make a car or a plane or something that has like you, you're like really lazy about it didn't follow protocol and it's like yeah oh, it's got like the brakes don't work on the car it's like gonna kill somebody like, right yeah so yeah i mean there's like ethical dilemma of that it's just my my views is just regards to like how we live in the information age today mm-hmm. and we were just using like like ai to like look up stuff and find information and everything for us yeah and it's just like why do i need to pay tens of thousands of dollars like almost 80 to 100 grand on a college degree when all that information is out there exactly so let me let me go back to shaps for a second in production Mm -hmm. um what degree would you have been encouraged to pursue for production jobs typically more often than not i mean this isn't like anymore but like kind of growing up because i kind of grew up in this field yeah so I was surrounded by a lot of film degrees. Film degrees. Believe it or not, that was like the majority. Okay. What, there were no engineers. It was all film degrees. Yeah. And actually, um, when you're like freelancing out in the industry, as they call it, like, you know, where you're, if you're working concerts, you're working like corporate shows, no one has degrees. Yeah, like literally exactly. no one has a That's degree. And like in my role, like my former boss, he had a degree or he has a degree and he was very adamant about everyone needing a degree, but then everyone else around me did not have a degree, but he had a degree for a totally different reason. Mm-hmm. Like it had nothing to do with production. Right. So in my particular field, no, you absolutely do not. You need experience yeah. 100% and you can get that without it. Okay. You don't need to waste money on that particular side. Okay. So my question to you then for that Shaps yeah. is that person, could they have taken that degree and it is unrelated to the job, but mm-hmm. would have, would that have counted still if, if the job requirement said four-year degree, could he have taken that unrelated degree and applied mm. it to that position? Would that have helped him? Technically, it really depends on who's hiring. In yeah. the in like the freelance world, it does not matter. They yeah. only care if you have experience in that field. Okay. They don't care what your head knowledge is as long as mm-hmm. like you know what you're doing on that particular show or project. If it's like more corporate, like if you're working like more consistently, like full-time salary stuff then they may actually care about it a little bit more. They just want to see a degree on paper. Mm-hmm. But it, again, like it, I said, it really depends because in that particular field, it's so broad, there's full people you know, from all different backgrounds. And typically, it's hard to find a production person who has a degree. So mm-hmm. more than likely, they're just wanting someone to fill the role. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's my thing. Here, here's my main point with this is like... Mm-hmm. Matt brought up STEM degrees, but like, let me, let me just be real here. Like, I think the biggest thing is that people need to go to school for something that's practical, like Uh something like they can actually use in the job. So I went to school for criminal justice, any criminal justice job, bro. Like if I'm being honest, they don't care if you have a degree, Mm -hmm. like if you want to be a policeman, that doesn't help. Very few cities have that requirement where you have to have a four year degree. Mm -hmm. Most of them do not where they just like, it, it might help you get a little pay raise, but at my place it gives me 50 bucks a month pay raise that's it 50 bucks a month okay which is almost nothing and that's split it we get paid bi-weekly so it's split up 25 bucks i'll pay off your debt yeah right yeah and so for me i was paying for college out of pocket going to school is so expensive for no reason a lot of people want to dog on the student loan reform and student blah blah like that's not the it just has no reason to be expensive exactly college is like it's not a resource that's like limited it's not student student loans isn't the issue why is college so dang expensive for no reason right well i would say like i've heard from a few sources that um it's actually getting way more expensive to run colleges Mm. now but why (laughs) because of the taxes i mean everything's getting more expensive like it just gets more it's practically a business think of it as a business you know and everyone's 
you see businesses falling apart like every day. Why wouldn't colleges be the same? Like no one's keeping them up for free, keeping the doors open and lights mm -hmm. on for free. Right. Like they have taxes to pay and bills to pay. And if they can't pay it, then oh, guess we gotta start charging more. Like it's a simple, you know, that's just a simple answer to everything. Yeah, like, I mean they're always, but they're always money. building like unnecessary like new amenities just to True. attract students. A lot of that if you're talking new about new buildings and all this stuff. If you're talking about private colleges, then that usually <clears throat> comes from donations. I wouldn't even um, say just private colleges too. If it well, majority of the time when it comes to amenities or like sports arenas, that comes from like donations. If it's like public college or like I don't I don't know. I don't see TCC really building much anymore. No. But it is very much public college. But like yeah. I'm talking about like TC or SMU, that all comes from like donation usually. Mm -hmm. Not from tuition. Matt, was your college private? No. Okay. Yeah. So he's right. Like they're always building all this crap mm -hmm. that you know. We just I don't know if we. I wouldn't say we don't need them because like uh, Sam finally added a like bowling alley and stuff to do. Back in the day when I went there, bro, there was nothing to do. You went sure. a few towns over to go have fun somewhere. I mean, my college town was also dead. But yeah. I get. So, wait, did you weren't the 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 town build the bowling alley or the college? Like, the college. Okay, yeah. So that's just gonna be that's just more cost to the students. Then. Sure. Exactly. Exactly. But you also got to think. I mean, I'm not like pro side either way. But like, you also got, you also got to think about um, how sports that just means so much to some people. Sure. That is how you get on the map. Like, literally, your sports team is probably how people are going to hear about you first before anything else. Yeah, like my uh, my college's football team sucked, mm -hmm. but just for the fact that we played A and M, like yeah, there you go. Like, hey, people learn we exist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's a good that's a good point to bring up. No, um so I was paying for college out of pocket and it was like at the time it's gotta be worse now. It's probably it might be double, I don't know. But at the time it was like four grand a semester. Yeah. Which is a lot. So what I was doing, I was working full time and going to school full time, which was tough. Like I went to the little counselor you're supposed to talk to before you make your school schedule and she was looking at me and she was like, Oh my gosh, Caleb, you're working way harder than anyone's supposed to. Like, how do you live? And I was like, I live. That's how I do it. That's how I do it. Chat gosh, GPT, I mean, baby. Yeah, <laughs> I wish, bro. That would have helped me so much. But no, I was sitting here and I had to pay for it out of pocket and it was like a at least a, like a twelve hundred dollar check every month to yeah. pay for the semester, you know what I mean? So like I I, I walked out of school with very little debt. I did very good. I had I have some debt, but not a lot. I really don't. Like some people. Some people are in the hundreds of thousands and I walked out with no debt and I still feel ripped off. Exactly. I mean, okay, to be clear, it wasn't like I had rich parents or anything, is that I worked my butt off in high school for scholarships mm -hmm. and the place I went to was very generous on giving out scholarships. Yeah. Um, not everyone has it like well. Okay. I didn't have a full ride, but I mean, I had to come up with some. But. If you're a mediocre student like me, like, and you got to pay for it, like, yeah. it's expensive. It's hard to go to college because I did at the time. I was thinking I I got to have a degree, and that you know this isn't my parents' fault, but th they were under the assumption that if you just have a degree, jobs open up for you. All this. That's how my open. parents are exactly, yeah. and that's mm -hmm. just wrong because mm -hmm. I could take my criminal justice degree and try to go to. Pl I've tried. Different no, places. It took me like a full year after graduating to find a job. Mm -hmm. With a relevant <clears throat> degree, an engineering degree, right? Yeah, because, again, there was no experience and like no entry-level job showing yeah, up. Yeah, and like in, when, the higher the corporate liar you go, the more um, cutoffs there are. Like, for instance, they have a list, typically, of degrees that are necessary, and there's no leeway in between them. Like, right. they have to have this. Exactly. It doesn't, doesn't say anything about your personality right. or your work ethic or anything, like, just to have this degree. Um, I was actually talking to a buddy of mine about this recently about college, and he made a really good point. He said he, he actually went to college, and he said it really doesn't make any sense why you're pushed at, into college right out of high school because chances are you have no idea who you're going to be until you're like 24, 25. No, yes. So That's why true. are we pushed to make our life choice so early on when we're still a kid? Pretty like, much, yeah. Before that even, like when you're 16, 17 years, they make you think about it, mm -hmm. and then you're practically throwing away your life or poten potentially your potential away. I kind of agree with you on that, but mm -hmm. on the flip side, I kind of hate how our modern society like pushes like our adolescence mm -hmm. to like by the time you're done with college around 22, say 23. Because mm -hmm. like, I don't know, because like back in the day, it's like, you know, like let's say like early, like early 100 years ago or something. Like, sure. You know, you're more like set at like, you're more of an adult at 16 right. than people are today at 22. Hmm. People you're... got married younger. People had kids younger. It's just... I would say the expectations of the society has changed given like 
just the time period, dude. Like that's a whole other conversation. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot more complicated to live in this century than it was the last century. True, as well, and so. it sucks. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Matt, if I'm being honest with you, if we lived in the uh, earlier century, you'd be yeah, you married wake, by now with children. Yeah, <laughs> I would have like eight kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you walk up, feed the cows, go back to bed. That's your life. Like, it's just, you have to from, go anywhere. You don't have to do from anything. sun up to sun down. It's a simple life. Oh, is there a war yeah. somewhere? I don't know. <laughs> Guess I'll join no, them. anyway. My biggest thing is like if you're gonna go to college, make sure it's for something that you can use. If you really just want to go to film school, bro, just do it. Yeah, then do it. But like uh, but the, the we push so much, like you have to go to college. Don't mm-hmm. don't matter what you get it in. False. Right. PSA, it's that's a lie. You know what I mean? Like if you're going to college with the expectation that you're gonna get a good job from it, you need to really look <laughs> at what degree you're going for. You might even want to start shooting here's a good idea. Why don't you start shooting job applications out? When you're around that age and see what they say, you're going to get turned down, obviously. If, sure. I, if I'm 18 and I shoot for an engineering job, look at why they said no. Right. Okay, because yeah. they, they, they tell you why, for the most part. Well, no, they just ignore you. They just ghost you. Well, here's, here's really? another... Yeah. Okay, well, how here's about Here's another this? thing for yeah. that. Uh, to go on, kind of piggyback on what you're saying, like, getting your foot in the door actually does good for you. Mm-hmm. Because, say you don't meet the qualifications for that particular job... They'll keep you on file. They they have to. And then like if they need a, if another job opens up and they're looking for people, like I would say like maybe not in your experience, but um in some experiences like they will like pull up their old applicants, you know, and say like, "No, oh, that has happened to me. Like people have called mm-hmm. me back up for like another interview, but I still didn't join their company." Yeah. <laughs> it's but, also good form to train that interview yeah. uh skill, you know, kind of like dating in a way. Let me scale that back then. So let me say, don't maybe not uh, if if you do get ghosted by big companies. How about this? At least start looking at filling out an application and figure out like what what are their qualifications. Yeah, sure. Do that, and then like you know, like I said, you don't have to go to art school, film school, music school. You really don't. But if you want to be a teacher, if you want to be an engineer, if you want to be a pilot, start looking mm-hmm. at those job applications and seeing what their expectations are. Yeah, yeah, I would say yeah. I, I kind of want to touch back on like my view is like. So I like in engineering, you got to study like math and science. Like, let's just say basically that's like you start with that mm-hmm. math, math and science because we live in the information age, like pretty much all that is accessible for you to learn on your own. Mm-hmm. And like math and science is not going to change overnight. Mm-hmm. If it did, we'll all be dead. <laughs> right. And if it's some, if we weren't somehow all dead overnight by like physics changing, it take the school system decades to catch up to it. <laughs> yeah. And also, like, other fields, like, let's say, programming, computer science, that one's always, like, more rapidly changing mm. than school can keep up with. That's true. So your degree could technically, in theory, be outdated like, yeah. by the time you actually get that. Yeah, I mean... But as long as you got that paper saying that you got that four-year degree... That's another thing I want to emphasize. I do not want to just give the false implication that if you have this degree, then you're qualified. Not necessarily. No, absolutely not. You need to put in work, just like any job you want, any career. I didn't you even have finish to Calculus work. 2 and went straight to Calculus 3. That's a funny story. But... <laughs> Is it? I want to hear it. Um, well, it's not that funny. It's just like, uh, somehow my Calculus 2 professor just like got sick halfway through the semester. Mm. And yeah, we didn't have a professor to finish the class. So they just passed you. Some mysterious yeah. circumstances. Yeah, we just kind of like... <laughs> the Undertaker. <laughs> he came Ominous. up with George Washington. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we just kind of like... They gave us like our final grade based off of like our first exam and homework. Mm, and wow. went straight to Calculus 3. <laughs> Is that the worst teacher you... No, nah, it's not his fault. He just... I guess y'all lost him. But what, uh, what was the worst teacher experience you've had in college? Oh, man. I hated my engineering department chair. Mm. I don't know. I just felt like, I don't know. I just, like I said, I feel like most professors, this is another topic. It's just, I feel like professors are just like out of touch with reality. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like most people in academia, they just like, you know, they got their bachelor's degree. Then they stay in school, got their master's, stayed in school more, got their doctorate. And now they're just staying in college as a professor or studying, you know, doing postgraduate work. But, like, I feel like a lot of them don't have the real-world field experience. Sure. Yeah. Dang, I didn't think about that. <clears throat> Honestly, now, I... that's just generalizing, but, I mean, yeah, but, I mean, I still feel like I knew a lot of people that just stayed in school, became doctors, and, like, never been outside in the real world. Mm. And then, yeah, I hated my department chair because he forced, like, my entire program online. And this was, like, before COVID. And so I was like, just didn't make any sense. Mostly, guys, just 
really think <laughs> about what makes you happy. What do you want to do? Like, I want to do production. You know, that's why I'm in this field. I'm really happy that I'm there. And I'm blessed, you know, that I actually got to a position I'm in. But, like, I'm also not done, you know? Like, I also want to explore. Like, it's, it's not like you get the career, you're done, you know? Like, you also want to explore, like, what else can you learn? Like, I know you say you don't really use your degree much. You're in a completely different field almost. Which I'm kind of glad about because yeah. if I actually knew, like, like, uh, I am at a desk all day for my job, like, and working from home. Mm -hmm. um, if I was actually doing what I went for, I would be really disappointed yeah. because, I don't know, like, not many engineers I work with, they're, like, you know, electrical, mechanical and stuff. They're, like, they're still, like, at a desk. Mm -hmm. not, like, if I was in electrical, if I was actually doing electrical engineering work, I would rather be, like, in a lab, like, dealing with circuitry, like, on hand and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But because I'm doing more programming, I'm totally fine with doing that at a desk. That's more... Sure. That's fine for me, so I'm actually glad the way it turned out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, when I got done with college, I kind of figured out my field that I'm in. I'm actually... It's not the field I would have liked to be in. Yeah. At the time, I thought it was. Right. But that's just something... It, it kind of goes back to what you said. You just don't know who you are at that mm -hmm. age. I used to work in a prison and I really, it was so eye opening when I was like, this is like, this is the field. This is the type, this is the type of people I'm going to be working with the yeah. rest of my career. Right. And if I had it, and actually when I was like 21, 20 years old, I was thinking like, I want to switch degrees, but I still didn't have the life experience to be like, what would I switch it to? Well, that's another thing. Like, yeah, it's like that time debt thing where it's mm -hmm. like, I'm already like invested 20,000 exactly. into my degree. Yes. It's like, I want to start over. Also yep. like 20,000 hours on top of that, you know, like whatever yeah. it yeah. is. And I had to talk with my dad. He's like, is that not what you want to do anymore? He's like, I don't know, dad. I really don't. Cause I'm already almost done and I'm mm. just not happy. And at, you know, when I was stuck at the prison, I thought that was where I was going to be the rest of my life. I really thought I was going to retire from there. In prison. How, how fitting. Yeah. I know exactly. And it was like, and also I, I was like an extra 50 pounds. So it just fed the depression but like looking back now, if I, I mean, obviously I don't, I don't have regrets really. I've said this before. My only regrets are when my decisions, bad decisions have hurt other people. Yeah. But in regards to my life, I am glad I went through what I went through with that. Like, man, I don't like my degree. This isn't what I want to, you know, what I want to do. I can take that now to either next generation or my kids or whatever and be like, look, there's nothing wrong with like taking some time away and figuring out what you want to do. And then like, you know, it's life to get the degree that you think you want and then start the job and then realize you're not happy with it and switch to something else. Don't fall victim to, it sounds very hippie. Don't be a product of the system. You know, mm -hmm. like, is this what you really want or is it what something else really wants yeah, for you? Is right. it a, is it a, you know, government entity that really wants this for you? Is it your parents that really want this for you? Your family, your friends? Like, yeah. what do you truly want? And it's okay not to know that right away. That's mm -hmm. the other thing. Because I thought, I mean, look, the criminal justice degree was my idea. Nobody pushed me to do it. Sure. My parents just pushed me to go to college. That's yeah. all they wanted. They wanted me to finish. And I had to find out on my own what I wanted isn't actually what I wanted. Yeah. And at the time, I guess I didn't think I was smart enough to be an engineer or smart enough to work in accounting. And I think I would have been much happier working those jobs. Mm -hmm. But I will say the going down this career path that I thought I wanted and realizing it's not what I wanted is very beneficial. And like honestly, you're doing really great right now. Yeah, you absolutely. know, like and also you, you just you kind of have funny enough after college you have like your whole life in front of you. Like mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know if you disagree with that, but like no, I, I, you yeah. do. I'm only 27. <laughs> even if even if I wanted to change again mm -hmm. my direction. I have time to do it. Yeah. But it's taking that step. Sometimes you feel trapped in a particular, like you were saying, you're, I'm already $20,000 in this or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. I don't have that much debt, thank God. <laughs> but um, if I did, there's nothing wrong with like, I'm just going to go and make a shift, mm -hmm. you know, but people get stuck in that rut of like, I'm already here, I may as well finish. And that's that's such a trap that people fall into and it just feels the depression. It feels the unfulfillment. There are some people who literally finish college and do nothing for the rest of their lives because they literally have no idea why they got into it in the first place. Yeah. There was no passion behind it. There wasn't any love behind it. It was literally just because they were told that's what the thing you do. That was kind of like my uh, crisis was like my whole life I've been told what to do. And then like once I'm out, it's like, oh, what do I do now? Mm. Then you're on your own and then you're expected to figure it all out. It's yeah. like, man, what have I been doing this whole time? It, it sucks. It's like a crash course. But honestly, if you can rise up above it and mm. like this is how I'm going to learn then you'll still walk away oh, yeah. a wiser person. And that's what mm -hmm. I had to do. I had to learn myself how to 
be happy with where I'm at no matter what. And it's not something anyone can teach you. They can tell you about it, but until mm-hmm. you start really applying it to your own life, then you'll uh, until you start actually making the decision on your own to be happy where you're at, you're never going to be happy. <laughs> really take care also of just like your physical and mental health. Because like when I worked at a uh, retail, everyone around me was going through college, and they were probably like you know 17, sometimes 16, like going through <laughs> early college stuff. And like I was saying before, this particular century is way more taxing just on the youth, like way more than it used yeah. to be. Um, and you know, these kids are making hard decisions than most adults have to. And it was literally eating them up. Like yeah. literally I saw them. I mean, there's a whole other like topic about today's youth versus. I'm just like, I look at these kids and I'm like, oh my God, they're literally like dying and they can't tell and they don't know why. I mean, a lot, I'm of, like, dude, a lot of kids today just feel so hopeless. Cause like mm-hmm. we look at like generations past, like, yeah, with, with like a high school degree, you could you know, support a family yeah. alone and buy a house and cars. And now they automatically feel like they're inherent failures, you know, because they don't have what their parents had at that age. My yeah. dad had a house at my age, like a straight up, just like house, like casually too. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't even have a crazy job or anything. I was like, man, really time was just different, dude. Yeah. 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 That was crazy. Uh, How long did it take you to save for a house, Matt? If you don't mind me asking. Um, well, I mean, I've only been in my current job for four years now. So, Really? Oh, for, just, okay. So I basically like my bank account was like nothing when I started my job. Well, you uh, you're smarter with money than I am, so you just really just really put it all. <laughs> it's that engineering that. money. Yeah, <laughs> you just put it all toward it. Let's be real. <laughs> I, I envy you. You make more than me, but I'm actually getting there. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm actually catching up, to which is good with pay raises. Yeah. But... All, all I honestly, I'm totally fine with what I'm making. I would, I, oh. I'm totally worth more, but I'm fine where I am because I love the job. I love the people, but. Uh, I would like to meet someone at least who makes at least a little mm-hmm. close to what I make, or at least the same. Well, that, that just reminds me, like, I, this, 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 this whole like this whole issue, I think, ties back to the cost of college issue. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't have, I would have no problems with college if it just wasn't for the cost. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I always, exactly. So we talk about like you know housing and everything being so up. I just, my belief is like, it's the student loans. Like mm-hmm. if. And it's, my, it's my belief about like everything in general. As long as like people can take loans out to pay for something, then that entity will just keep rising the prices because they can get away with it. Correct. So like, college has increased like what do they say like four times faster than inflation. Yes. Mm-hmm. So yes, that's because they're just like oh people just take out more and more loans. Mm-hmm. You see the same thing with like houses and cars and boats. So <clears throat> this is just mind blowing to me. So like my dad has a. A Ranger bass boat. He bought like over ten years ago. This was like maybe two thousand six or seven ish. It's 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 not I it's like it's kind of old, but it's very well taken care of. You wouldn't even know. But um, anyway, <clears throat> I think the boat might have cost like thirty ish thousand in the mid two thousands. Today, like the same like boats cost like oh, about a hundred grand. Mm. And they, cause they, and they will finance you for 20 years on a boat, on a boat. Yeah. yeah. Like imagine having a mortgage for a boat. Mm. It's just because like, they know they can, you can just get it. away with it. Anybody yeah. that can like, as long as like they get their money, they're just going to get away with it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Cause people want to fish. People want to have a boat. It's so appealing to them. You know, yeah. like you said, yeah, a, a, a mortgage on a boat. Hell no. I'm sorry. And like, we see like, you know, <laughs> yeah. trucks and cars are like. They're going crossing up. to like sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, guys, let me go back to the original question, and then we'll close it out. Shaps, is college worth it? I think that the answer is different for every person. Is it worth it to you? Then do it. If it's not, then don't. Matt. Yeah, it's not a clear yes or no. It's you really got to be goal oriented, and. I guess very driven. Think like, yeah, I'm going to get this and stick with it, which again, that can change. But um, yeah. also, like, I wouldn't do it if you're going to cripple yourself in debt. Yeah. But again, it's very, Absolutely. there's so many factors in it from person to person. But okay. My answer is no, unless you're going for something very practical, something you can use, something you know that really requires a degree. We didn't even talk about connection making, like, if you make. Oh, well. That's a very good topic, but we are out of time. All right, guys. It was such a great episode. We started off with Off the Wall Crazy, and then we somehow awkwardly transitioned to a very serious topic, which we didn't didn't even cover. We were very scrambled on it. We didn't even cover the whole thing that we could have covered. 
Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm very excited. Yeah. Great talk, guys. Great talk. Take it away. Bye, guys.